Hello navigation friends, John here with the Columbia River Orienteering Club. Our video today is going to cover everything you need to know about how to set up the Sport Ident electronic scoring system software and hardware before an orienteering meet. Now before we get started, I'd like to throw out a little disclaimer. I make no claim to be an expert in how to use this. I've been doing it for a year or so in my club and my hope with the video here is to help other people who know even a bit less than I do about how to get going with this hardware and software because honestly it's not very intuitive when you first want to get started to set it up correctly. For those of you watching who may be more experienced with this or have some other tips of how to better use it, feel free to make a constructive comment below so we all can learn together. Thanks. Let's get to it. Before we get into the step-by-step, -step, let's have a look at the hardware and some terminology. First, you're going to need a Windows PC or laptop with the Sport Ident configuration software loaded onto it. Second, finger sticks. These are used by competitors to record the control station and exact time they visited. Third, the black box. This unit records all the data from every finger stick at an orienteering event and when connected to the thermal printer, as we see here, can print out split results at the end of the event. Fourth, the red box. This is a device that allows data transfer between the computer and other hardware components via a USB plug. Fifth, field units. These are numbered blue boxes that go on each control flag. Sixth, the administrative units. These are blue boxes labeled clear, check, start, and finish. Our club puts red tape around these so you can easily identify them at a glance. Seventh, last but not least, we've got this little metal cylinder. Doesn't look like much, but it's really important. This is called the coupling stick, and it lets the red box transfer data to all the other boxes. This little sucker is easy to lose. Ask me how I know this, so be sure and keep track of it. Finally, we've got the purple finger sticks, which you use to turn off and clear the hardware. Step one is clear the data from the black box. We'll start with something really easy. Notice the one in the purple sticks says clear and backup. So if we take that and put it for a moment into the black box, it beeps a couple of times and all previous event data is now removed from the black box. This makes printing out results for your upcoming meet much less confusing. Task number two, clear data from all finger sticks. Now, if you're experienced in orienteering, you know that you should always clear your finger stick just before you start your race. But these are rental finger sticks that our club owns that we generally loan to less experienced people, and they don't always remember to do that. This next step ensures that all the finger sticks will be used at an event are completely erased before competitors start their course. We're going to get all the rental finger sticks and put them one by one into the blue box marked clear to erase all previous event data. Here's a quick example to show you how data is actually recorded on the finger stick. This red unit here has a few points on it from a previous event, and if I put it in the black box that's connected to the printer, we can see that there are a few controls on here from a previous meet. We do not want to have that on events that we loan out. So now we can take the finger stick, put it in the clear box for a moment. It does a beep, and now if we go back to the thermal printer, and put it in, we can now see there are no results printed out, meaning that this finger stick is now completely clear and ready to give out. Now you don't want to do this for every single stick to test it, I just wanted to give it here as a quick demo to show you how to erase the data from the stick. So that's how you go about erasing the finger stick data, nothing to it. Put it in until it beeps. Sometimes it takes a moment and repeat that for all of the rental sticks that you have. Our third task is to check the time on the laptop and to be sure that it matches a time on your smartphone, which generally is pretty spot on. If we go down, at least in this version of Windows, we go down to the lower left corner, we can see the time is 11.57 a.m. That happens to exactly match my phone, so we're good to go there. Keep in mind that it is not super critical to have the time on the computer that matches as an atomic clock or something super accurate. What is important is that it matches your smartphone time to within 30 seconds or so, and mainly that every part of the hardware system is then synchronized to this time. 
If you do need to adjust the time in Windows, you can click that clock in the lower left corner to set the time. Important note here, if you are having an event anywhere close to daylight savings time, you want to be super duper sure that the time in the computer is correct. Otherwise, the timing on some of your hardware units can be more than an hour incorrect. Our next task is to set the exact correct time onto the red box. Here I have opened the sportident.config software and I've plugged the red box with the USB plug into the computer. If this connects happily, you'll hear a little chirp noise and also notice in the bottom of the red box is a glowing red light that means you've got a good connection. Check out in the upper left corner here, we've got a toggle between direct and remote. You want to have it on direct and then you want to click on clock from the top. It'll wait for a moment, and now we see big, a clock in big letters running here. That is the actual time on the PC, and here on the bottom we see um, the time of 12.04. That's what's on the red box, so we've got about a three minute difference between the two. To synchronize those up, we can go up to the top here and click set time. It's going to chunk away for a moment, and now we notice the two times, 12.07 and 12.07 are almost identical. And the difference between the two is down just to a fraction of a second, which is exactly what you want. Now the time in the red box matches exactly the time in the laptop. So our next step is to set the exact right time and erase data from the black box. In the SI config software, we're going to click on this big green box that toggles from remote to direct. We're going to toggle it to remote. Now over here on the red box, we're going to take the coupling stick, put it into the red box, take the black box and turn it upside down over the coupling stick. Now back on the computer screen, if we click settings, it should take a moment and read remotely the data on the black box. That is pretty cool. Notice this box sort of here in yellow on the top half of the screen. That has the information that we want to see. Notice it says PRN, that means it's a printout box. We're going to leave operating time at 20 minutes. Let's check this out, the real time clock. Now this number right here shows the difference in seconds between the red box and the black box. We want these synchronized. So if we click set time, it'll chunk away for just a second. It says successful and now the time is 000. They're exactly the same. And we've got a nice battery life left. So that's cool. The final thing here is to click apply at the top. That's very important. That applies the settings to this device. Click that. We hear a little chirp and that means our real time clock now. Again, a fraction of a second difference between the red box and the black box. That's just what we want. We're now ready to go with the black box. So our next task and the one that usually takes the longest is to set the exact right time on all the blue admin and the blue field units. Sort of like your own wristwatch, the time on the blue units can drift. This is roughly about 30 seconds per month. And as I mentioned before, it's especially important to synchronize time after daylight savings time changes. Otherwise, the units, instead of a few seconds, are going to be a whole hour wrong. Therefore, before an event, you want to be sure all the blue units are synchronized with the exact same time. That's what we're about to do. So here's a side note. When you do synchronize the blue units, the software auto-automagically erases all the previous event data from the blue field units, which is important and makes printing split times after an event a lot easier. Let's start with the blue admin units. Clear, check, start, and finish. You may have two start or two finish units if you run races with a lot of people. Let's take, let's start with check. We're going to put that over the coupling stick in the red box. Having this face up is fine. If we go back to our screen, we have the toggle on remote, which is good. Let's click settings, and that should read the check unit that's on top of the box. Hmm, retry too many errors. We occasionally get that. Usually clicking it again can clear things up. Ah, successful. Good, that's what we want to see. So let's have a look at a few things here. Operating mode. It's in check, which we want to have. Time difference, very close time sync. Uh, battery 33% left, that's always good to check. If we click on set time, that should synchronize the time now exactly between the two units. 
And little notice up here in operating mode. We want to keep this unchecked, but if we click this drop down, notice that we can have and change this to any of these other units. These are little blue boxes. Think of them as kind of like stem cells. If we wanted to make this a control 100, we could click on control and click change this code number to 100, and we'd change a clear unit into a control. So having this versatility can be really nice. We don't want to do that. We want to keep this on check right where it was. And important at the end to change, uh, save all your changes, you want to click apply at the top. That then saves all your changes and you're done with that one. We now repeat these with every one of the blue boxes you're going to use on the course. Now, there is a slightly faster way to synchronize time that involves using the coupling sticks without going into every single one like this. But I like to check the battery life on the field units before we meet, and it takes about 20 minutes to get through all of the 40 or so controls that our club has. So it's really pretty fast, and uh, you can do it that way or try the alternative coupling stick method. So we just saw how to do it for one. Let's try it with one more. Check is done. Let's take the start. We'll put that down. Go back to root. Now we can click read on the screen. Chick chunk, chick chunk. Hmm, didn't like that one either. Okay, that's what we want eventually is a happy ending. This one is two seconds off, so we're going to click set time. Successful, apply, beep, we're done with that one. And now we keep on repeating this for all the other blue units. I think you get the idea.